Logan Paul last week had a podcast. His his, his whole thing is in um his whole setups in Puerto Rico now. So he's officially there now. Mm-hmm. He's talking like he's essentially recounting his story about being able to like acqu- actually acquiring that PSA 10 first edition Shadowless Charizard from Gary. And then on his mm. way back from Vegas, he's looking at the card. And he's like, man, this is a perfect card. And so he decides to crack it out of the case. He, he tells a story about how like him being a Maverick, like he, he was, he was up, to, he was, he stepped, he stepped up to the plate to be able to do that. Like not a lot of people would, are willing to crack, you know, $150,000 card out of a case to be able to mm. net, you know, a potential million dollars, but you could also very much lose money in the process just for sending a card out to, to P to Beckett and they downgrade it or, um, they, 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 they just don't give you the grade you want. So like you lose money in the grading fees and the insurance insurance alone. So, um, he, he's recounting that. And, you know, towards the end of that little portion of that segment, Mike is basically saying that that's not even the most craziest story there is. And the most craziest story hasn't been revealed. And a lot of the projects that Logan has been working on will be revealed in, after 35 days. So I think that's going to be a, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but I kind of want to, you know, field it out to both of you as to uh, what you guys think is going to happen. So this is more a more of a, a speculation kind of conversation. And I want, you know, our chat to kind of discuss it as well. Yizzy, I'll let you lead on this. I'd be interested to hear what you think. Um, so I rewatched the, the clip, and a, a, a few key, wor- key words um stood out to me. So people in the chat talked about it. It's in within 35 days, which the thing was posted six days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said he was traveling for this. That stood out to me a lot. He's like, I don't travel vaca- for vacation, but I've been traveling for this project. And his good buddy, what's his friend's name? Mike. Mike. Mike said... After he told the story about the BGS 10 Charizard, he said, that's not even the Pokemon story. So in my mind, I'm trying to think of something that could be crazier than this. And then he, he pointed out, like, my brain can't even fathom how big this will be. And then um, the last few keywords that come out um, of Logan's mouth after he said this, because he really was, like, kind of sweating. He's like, Mike, stop talking about this. He's like... When I dive deep into something, I go absolutely all in. I put all my eggs in a basket. I engulf myself in it. Same he did with boxing and the same thing he's doing with Pokemon. And this is something he said he's going to do the rest of his life for. So those are the few keywords I took out of like that short five-minute clip. And I was like, wow, those are big. So he's traveling for it. And it just goes back to, I don't think it will, but it goes back to the initial conversation we had when um, he talked about when he did his first edition box break. Like, does he control the market? I know this sounds like really dumb because he's already done a second box break. But the will Logan Paul, like with this, whatever project isn't will he be controlling the market or is he going to shake up the market in some sense so those are like the biggest questions i have based off what he's been telling us but oh man i'm just trying to think of anything he might be doing for this project what are your thoughts alex my mind goes to two places i mean the obvious thing is he bought a more expensive card than a bgs 10 charizard which you know you're thinking about an illustrator pikachu potentially um, you know, maybe some something even grailing on top of that grail. The other piece could be, obviously, Logan is like a WWF hype man who can make even the most kind of uh, blasé projects, like a new merch drop, feel like Armageddon. So it could be some <laughs> NFT thing that no one's going to care about. He's like, a one of one NFT of me, bareback on Charizard flying through the sky. There's only uh, one. And like, we're all going to yeah. be like, ah, oh, really? Like it's a Logan's yeah. delivery Charizard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty interesting thing. Cause like, what if, what if it kind of ties into his NFT project that he did back during the second first edition shadowless box break? Like what if he has that's something true. that's associated with it? It's like, Hey, if you own these NFTs, then you're able to get this, this, and that. And that could def that could, potentially pump up the prices for that particular nft or something like it i i don't know i mean like it's all of us are literally just speculating and i mean i i kind of go back to 
like we kind of go back to two different moments, right? We talk about, you know, the fall and how his, his initial box break, you know, and, and the stuff leading up to that created, you know, a crazy amount of hype and FOMO in the market. But when we look back at the second box break, that did nothing. And, you know, I, 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 yeah. I, I called it, you know, it did, it did absolutely nothing as far as the market goes. I mean, a lot of people were freaking out, but I was like, I don't think anything's going to happen. You know, like, I literally not even yeah, Shiv, just kept you, going. Shiv, you got me, Shiv, yeah. you got me on that one huge. Cause I was in the camp of, I, on, I think it was on January 1st, I think right at the stroke of midnight, I was like, just scared in my Instagram story. Like I'm scared. No one will be able to buy a base set limited pack next year i was like legitimately like i think after this next box break it's gonna be game over for people like it's gonna be a base set of limited packs gonna be more than sky ridge sky ridge yeah. is gonna be four grand because we return to this every time we open a box there's less yeah there's less like it's yeah. and it's like we talk about supply and demand with modern all the time think about it with vintage yeah. They we we keep opening these boxes. At some point, the dark factory in Chicago or Detroit, wherever these cases are sitting, it's empty. You know? Yeah. It's like gas. At some point we're gonna run out. So mm -hmm. it's but to your point, Shiv, I mean, yeah, you were dispassionate and you called it. I mean, I definitely got I was I was shocked. Yeah, like yeah. I was sitting on clubhouses like a full on two weeks before and we were just kind of discussing it <laughs> with uh Pokonomics, shout out to Pokonomics um zng emporium a bunch of other people even radar himself uh we were like i don't think anything's going to happen i think we saw everything that we needed to see and this is like right after things started correcting so um mm. i i'm trying to like wrap my mind around what would it take for something bigger than what happened in the fall like i'm trying to figure out like what would, what would have to happen in order for that to happen right like we thought that the pokemon you know, for a few weeks before the Pokemon Saves the World event, we thought that was going to do something and nothing happened. Um, so, like, I'm trying to figure out what would what would be bigger than Pokemon Saves the World? What would be bigger than the last uh, Logan Paul box break? What, what would what would it take to bring it up to that high? So well, I, I think I think it's not a massive crowd thing because we've already had the massive crowd distribution. And this is a conversation Radar and I have had a bunch of times. Mm. Um when the correct investors and auctioners in the Middle East, in Riyadh, you know, in Dubai, like in these epicenters of wealth, mm -hmm. you know, there's these uh, auctions where families will literally bid $10 million on a license plate for their Rolls Royce because they want a single digit license plate. Mm -hmm. And the zero one license plate would go for $14 million. And these people have a level of wealth. Like, they'll send their 12-year-old kid there to do it. Like, they'll go like, okay, Ahmad, head in there. And he raises uh -huh. his hand, and they just bid $12 million on this 0-1 license plate. So when Pokemon hits, when there's, a, when there's a sale that's equivalent to a Banksy, something like the Rolls-Royce single-digit plate license plates, when you start hitting those echelons of that society, that 0.00001%, that's when Pokemon goes up. Not because of all the people, but because the top, top that decide that Picasso was worth 78 million, those people decide. It's not about us, really. Those top people are pulling everything up. So if Pokemon ever got to that point where you had... It's no different than sports cards. When a Tom Brady card sells for 4.8 million, mm -hmm. that makes everything else rise with it. Mm -hmm. Even if you correct, you're still far higher than you were before the correction. Absolutely. I think, I, I don't know that that's coming with how many different investment, you know, things you could have right now with NFTs emerging and all this different st crypto coins. It's just, there's so much to invest in right now that I don't know that Pokemon's having this moment yet. 